Hey, and welcome to my channel. Today's video, I'm going to be talking about my Mr. Heater 50,000 BTU forced air kerosene heater. A lot of people are calling my torpedo heater. It basically has got a fuel tank, and it's got a blower, and it forces heat out of it, plain and simple. <laughs> but anyways, I'll put the picture of the model number up on the screen. It's rated for 50,000 BTUs. It's designed for 1K kerosene. Now, that's what it's designed for, but it is a multi-fuel heater. Back here on the fuel tank, it's got a label here showing the types of fuels you can use and the, the temperature ranges that them fuels will be appropriate for. had this heater for about three or four years now and I haven't had any problems with it whatsoever it throws out a lot of heat what I like about it is forced air it's got a blower in it and you can have this sitting 10 feet or so away from your work area and it'll keep you warm you don't want it right up on you it'll catch you on fire it'll get hot quick but I, what I really like using this for is if I'm having to work outdoors on a car or truck and it's cold outside, you can put this a little distance away from you, have that heat blowing on you, and you won't freeze to death. It's been perfectly fine for what I've used it for. I mostly use this for working outdoors when it's cold. This garage that I uh, work in is an old wood frame garage. It's very drafty. It says you can use indoor with adequate ventilation. So if I'm using it inside this garage, I'll have some doors cracked open and all. So there's some airflow going on. And also, it's an old wood frame garage. It's drafty like it is with the door shut. But I make sure I got plenty of airflow coming through here if I got this running inside this shed. Now, I want to talk about the fuels a little bit. From my experience, if I'm using it inside the garage, I run 1K care, the clear kerosene in it. With the clear kerosene, I get very little smell out of it. It burns pretty clean with all 1K kerosene. And on the fuel chart, it shows your, your highest heat output is going to be running this off of kerosene or jet fuel. That's going to give you your maximum BTUs out of this unit. Never try jet fuel in it. Don't know where to go. I reckon you go to the airport to buy jet fuel. I don't know. I don't buy jet fuel. <laughs> so I use kerosene in it. Now if I'm using it outdoors and I know I'm going to be using it outdoors, I've always just bought the cheapest off-road diesel that I can and on this chart you'll see that the next uh, fuel grade down you can run diesel in it it doesn't put out quite as much heat but it'll throw out a lot of heat it shows kind of a big difference between them to me I don't notice that much difference in heat output between the kerosene and diesel and I'll buy the off-road diesel because this is off-road, it's cheaper. Right now, it's the time I'm filming this, is it's uh, March of 2022, and fuel prices are skyrocketing. So right now, from what I've seen between the price of kerosene and the price of diesel fuel, you really ain't gonna save nothing anyhow now. But a year or two ago, you could buy off-road diesel half the price of kerosene. So if you was using this outdoors, run diesel fuel in it, cost you half as much to heat with it. And that was fine, but now that the fuel prices are all crazy, it ain't really much difference in it. Also on it, it says you can use that number two oil, like that old type heating oil. I've never used that in it either. All I've used in it is uh, 1K kerosene and off-road diesel. Never had a problem, put out great heat. So I just want to cover that a little bit. Now, if you're running diesel fuel in this, 
it will, especially when it starts up, it'll smoke a little bit. You'll get a little bit smoke and you get more uh, vapors and, and fumes and smells coming off of it when you're running diesel fuel on it. The kerosene burns much cleaner. But if you're in the open area outside, it's really not that big of a deal. It's been a great heater. I like using it. One thing I like about this heater is when it's at its hottest, this outside metal shell doesn't get hot to the touch. It stays pretty cool. It'll be like a little warm, but it's cool enough to the touch. You can put your hand on it and it won't bother you. Inside here, it has a double wall liner in there. So there's an air gap in between this, this inner tube and this outer tube and that allows this to be more insulated off from the heat. It's forcing all the heat out of the uh, end of it. The end right here will glow cherry red. Up here it's hot, but back here it stays pretty cool to the touch. You can put your hand on it. You ain't got to worry about burning yourself. I like all them aspects of it. Also, one thing about this, it just has an on and off switch, off and on. It auto ignites for you. You don't have to light anything or anything. You just have your drop cord, 110 drop cord plugged into this plug on the back. And all you got to do is just flip the switch and it works. One of the things I don't like is it just having an on and off switch. That's fine if you're using it outdoors, you're not having, you're gonna have it running continuous anyways because you're not inside anything to capture any of the heat for it to heat up. But if you're using it in a more enclosed area that like inside this garage, after this thing runs a few minutes, it, it puts out some heat. So then you gotta walk back over here, cut it off. When you get cold, you gotta flip the switch. Some of the more expensive ones, the higher, bigger ones, they got an actual thermostat on them. You can adjust the temperature level on it. It'll cut it in and out as it needs to. Now, as far as inside this uh, garage, this is a it's about a 12 by 20, 12 by 22 uh, garage. When it's 30 degrees outside, I can come in here, turn this on, and within 30 minutes, it's 65, 70 degrees in here, and and really hot. It has no problem heating up this this size garage at all and that's considering how drafty this building is with the doors open for ventilation. So as far as if you got an area that's like 12 by 20, 14 by 20 or even bigger this may work for you. It may be all you need. If you got a huge shop, you got a 50 by 50 building or something yeah you might need something bigger but for what i do and what i use it for plenty enough here on the back side of it you got the power cord where you can plug the drop cord into it you got your fuel cap where you put your fuel in it and this tank holds somewhere around three gallons of fuel i ain't measured it to a t i don't remember the specs off the top of my head when this thing is full, this thing can run continuously probably about 12 hours or so. It'll get you through a day's, day's work being full, running continuously. Now I'm going to show you a couple things that I don't like about this heater. The number one thing I do not like about this heater is this cheap plastic handle. If this tank is full of fuel, this thing weighs a good little bit. A gallon of diesel weighs around eight or nine pounds, I believe. So if you got three gallons of fuel in here, you're talking about somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 extra pounds on top of the weight of the, the heater itself. So probably like 30 pounds if it's full of fuel. And this handle, so far I haven't had any problems with it. It hasn't broke. But when you pick it up and it's got fuel in it and stuff, that handle just feels cheap. It kind of creaks and stuff, and it feels like it's going to break off there. It hasn't, but it feels like it's going to. That's 
So I just want to point that out. I don't like that plastic handle. Now the idea I got for when this thing does break, I'm going to take me a piece of uh, flat steel to, link, to match up to these bolt holes. I'm going to take something like some maybe some rebar and just weld me up a like a D handle onto that metal plate, bolt it down. Then I'll have me a handle on here that's made out of steel, and then that won't I won't have to worry about that breaking no more. So that's my idea for whenever this finally does break, because I know one day it's going to, just by the feel of it. A minute ago, you might have heard me mention that one of the things I didn't like about this heater was it just having this on and off switch and not having an adjustable thermostat on it so you can set it to cut on and off as you need it instead of it just running full blast and cooking you. But I found a solution to that, and it's this little device here. It comes with this wireless remote and this uh, power box right here. It just plugs into your power supply. Then you can plug the heater straight into it. And then this is a wireless remote. It has like a 30 or 40 foot range on it, something like that. And what you can do is, if you got this heater sitting 10 or 15 feet away from you and you're working on the other side of the shop or wherever you're working at, you could have this remote laying in your work area, somewhere near you, somewhere in your area. Then whenever it gets to the set temperature you got it set, it'll cut it off. When the temperature drops below that, it'll turn the heater back on. And you can move this around wherever you are so you can control the comfort and it's reading the temperature uh, right where you're standing at. And I kind of like this better than if it had a thermostat built into it because if it had a thermostat built into it, it would be pulling the heat that's in the area of the heater, but not where I'm actually standing at. And this thing blows out heat pretty good and you're not going to be standing right next to this heater or when it's cutting on and off. So th this just makes it a little more, a little easier to control the temperature in the area you're at. You can just have this with you and you'll be good. Don't mind all the paint over spray on this stuff. It's been in the work environment. But anyhow, I got this off of Amazon for 20 something bucks. It was real easy to set up. It came with the instructions. It's got different settings where you can have it set for uh, heat, where it cuts on and off for heat, or the reverse for air conditioning. But anyhow, it's easy to set up and I ain't had no problems with it. I got this not long after I bought the heater, and it was one of the best upgrades I could have done to it. I'll put a link to it in the description below this video where you can uh, find it on Amazon. Like I said, it was like 20 something bucks, well worth it. Now, if you're using the temperature remote with it, you just leave that power button on the heater on, and then just let this do the work. You can see it's pretty warm in here right now. And you see when I turn the temperature up. It kicks on. And then when the temperature drops back down, it turns off. Just as easy as that. So that's my thoughts on this heater. I like it. I would buy it again works great showed you what I don't like about it and I gave you some options of ways you could fix them things if you don't like them either if you buy this heater so anyways I hope you enjoyed the video if you liked it give it a thumbs up comment down below and subscribe to the channel and thank you for watching